Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This is my client Travis. He sings and plays guitar in a band called Girlfriends. You can find him on Instagram at Travis Mills. I've been cutting this dude's hair for a very, very long time now. I think I knew him like maybe before he even picked up a microphone, but we go way back and I freaking love this guy. So as you can see, Travis has a very messy, jagged haircut. And because of his heavily bleached hair, it really helps that texture to pop and look all jagged and thrashed and kind of crazy. But the other thing that's gonna help it is the cut. So what we're doing throughout the top here is deep point cutting. And essentially I'm cutting down as deep as I can to my fingers. Um, so the shortest hairs are basically finger length, but then the longest hairs are just kind of remnants of whatever grew out from the last haircut. There's not a really strong shape here. In fact, I, I kind of keep everything round to the head and I'm deliberately missing some hairs here as I cut this because I want the variation from the shortest hair to the longest hair to be quite extreme, which is going to make the hair feel a lot thinner. Um, this is like really thinning out the hair. Travis has like crazy, crazy thick hair. And so we we thin it out quite a bit. And so we're just doing these really big, deep chops, following the shape of the head, keeping everything round. And I like to keep it round because when we square his hair off, it like piles up too much and it looks like way too square, even if I just do it a little bit square. Now in the back here, Travis is actually beginning to grow a little bit of a mullet. And so what I'm doing is I'm leaving all the length at the bottom and I'm using it as a guide. I'm pulling it up to as far up as that length will go. And then from that point, I'm just continuing to sort of graduate the hair up to the occipital bone. This is gonna do a few things. It's going to make his hair feel less bushy and gross as it's growing into a nice flowy mullet. It'll kind of like bypass the puffy stage in the middle there. Uh, but also it's gonna make the, ha the haircut really emphasize the shape of his head here. We're gonna have kind of bigger hair over the occipital and then that nice lettuce down at the bottom growing in. But everything's gonna still feel shapely on the way down there. I'm roughing out this shape here with just you know diagonal and horizontal sections following the direction that I want the hair to flow. And you can see the result gives us this kind of weight line around the parietal ridge that makes, even though it is a very thrash kind of haphazard haircut, it fits the head. It's got weight right where the head is widest. So now with this hair on the, over the occipital bone, I'm going in and punch cutting to put some short pieces in there that'll want to encourage some movement because I don't want that to sit too heavy. Now I'm going to blow dry the hair. The haircut is, I don't know, 50% done at this point, but I want to rough dry it all over. And uh, so this is high heat and high power. I'm just wiggling the hair a whole bunch. And because his hair is so processed, it actually takes a very long time to dry. If you've ever bleached your hair before, you might've noticed this. It's a, it takes a long time to dry bleached hair. And once everything is dry, what I'm gonna do is use a brush on the areas that I plan to cut still, because this is gonna make everything lay a lot more uniformly. You can see that as soon as I added the tension from the brush, um, everything got a little smoother. And once I go over it with a paddle brush, I'm gonna go back with this Mason Pearson brush, which is something new to me, but this thing is freaking phenomenal. I just started using it and you can see the result out of this brush. Like the hair looks like it was flat ironed down to the head. It gets so smooth and so flat. Like this thing is absolute magic. I'm, I'm really glad that I finally decided to try one of these. It's like absolute game changer. So anyways, I wanna get all this hair laying really smooth and flat because it's gonna help me in the next process to cut it essentially the more uniformly everything lays, the more uniformly it will cut. If everything's laying wavy and you cut a straight line on wavy hair, you don't have a straight line. But if you cut a straight line on straight hair, you have a straight line. Okay, we're shaving off the sides here. Oftentimes when I'm cutting Travis's hair, he's like, hey, let's do something crazy. Sometimes he wants a normal haircut. Sometimes he's like, I just want to do something weird. So here we just decided to do something weird. He was like, let's just shave big pieces off the sides. I'm taking a minute here. I'm not working in front of a mirror. And so I'm using my fingers and moving around to make sure this is even on the left and right side. And um, obviously, you know, symmetry is a little bit important. So I'm going to stop and check that a couple times as I'm working through here to make sure that these sort of bald pieces here match up. And I actually, I kind of got lucky that they matched up like on the first try. I thought I was gonna have to go back and refine a few times. Since I have the edger out, I'm gonna go in and clean up the neck hair and that's gonna allow that little mullet zone to move more freely. Now on these corners here, the last time we cut his hair, we were gonna try to let those grow out so they could hang over the short sides, but we decided that they don't really like to do that. And so I'm, what I'm going to do is just kind of cut them rounded to the shape of the head near the front there. And I'm using a texturizing scissor as I do this and thinning out a little bit of the hair in the back to help it lay a little more smoothly, remove some tool marks from the previous cutting. And basically in the back here, I'm gonna leave everything kind of square with a strong weight line over the occipital bone, but in the front, I'm gonna go a little bit rounder and keep everything slimmer and tighter to the head. I want these areas to be really busted up so that they move a lot. So that's why I'm using the texturizing scissor to do this. But also when you're cutting very blonde hair like this, 
every tool mark shows. And so I like to use a texturizing scissor on, on bleached hair because it like, there's no tool marks that way. Here, I'm just kind of dusting over some pieces that look like they were a little bit too long. So now I'm gonna go back with that Mason Pearson brush and smooth everything out. And you'll see pretty quickly here, it's just like, it adds this level of polish to the hair that is crazy. I, I, sh I wish I could be sponsored by these folks. I wish they would send me a bunch of brushes. Um, I'm, I'm very new to using this. I've only been using it for a few days, but it has been absolutely magical. I didn't even realize I was gonna rave about it so much until, you know, until I started raving about it. So I'm going through here and just smoothing everything out, um, pulling it with a lot of tension with this brush. And you can see pretty quickly, it goes from fluffy, frizzy, curly hair to like, like looking texturized. So oftentimes in very processed hair, which tends to kind of look dull um, because it's got that rough surface from being bleached and processed, I like to use ADH wet. Even if I'm going for what might end up looking like more of a matte finish, this is a very shiny product, but on dull bleached hair, adding that shine just kind of makes it look like not dull. It doesn't make it look jelly and, sh and shiny and heavy and greasy. So I'm taking this product very sparingly and working it all throughout the hair in multiple applications. Instead of grabbing one big lump and trying to spread it over the whole head, I take a tiny lump and spread it over the whole head. I take a tiny lump and spread it over the whole head. And then I'm just kind of reaching into the hair and scrunching and, and trying to get it evenly distributed throughout everything. Hair like his, it's, again, is very, very dense, very thick. It's kind of hard to evenly distribute product throughout there. If I wasn't um, cutting this, I would have put the product in before blow drying to help distribute it more evenly, but afterward works too. Now, before I show you the final result, let's do a little photo shoot here to see the result in a, a more flattering light. These lights in the back here are Godox SL60 video lights. They're very cheap on eBay or Amazon or whatever. I have a video about them and how I like to use them in the salon. These other lights that I'm adding here are Young Nuo, YN 360s, and I do have a review on these lights as well. Anyways, the reason I wanted to use these Young Nuos is, as you can see, I'm injecting some color here. I put some gels over those Godox lights, and these Young Nuo lights are able to completely change colors to like whatever I want them to be. Now I have two Young Nuo lights that are synced together, so when I change one, the other one changes. And through the majority of the shoot, I actually have the second light pointing away from what we're doing, but I just have it there in case I need to grab a little bit more power output. For the camera today, I'm using a Canon R6. This is like my, my big fancy camera that is honestly overkill for what I do, but because I'm going to be pushing a lot of colors around while editing here, I want that bit depth of the raw files that come out of the R6. This thing is very, very flexible to edit. Um, the lens that I'm using on there is a Samyang 85 millimeter f1.2. Absolute phenomenal value. Like you will not get this image quality for this price with any other lens. Anyway, so here, as you can see, I was shooting with um, a little bit of pink and a little bit of blue. I'm very lightly editing these, these photos. I'm changing some hues and I'm changing a tone curve. That's about it. I'm probably gonna edit these just entirely on my phone. But the idea is I just wanna inject a whole bunch of color. Now, a great thing about working with somebody like Travis is he's in front of the camera a lot. It's a part of his job. And so I don't need to really tell him much how to pose. Like he just kind of knows his angles. And so we can get in here and just experiment with lighting and let him kind of stand. Here with the green and purple setup, I was very unhappy with what I was getting out of the lights. I didn't want to do the light from the side like I did with blue and pink. I wanted to change it up, so I put the light on top. I didn't like the way it was looking, and then Travis said, wait, I have an idea. He looked up here, and I was like, holy crap. Like, before I even before I even grabbed the, the put the camera to my eye, I knew it was gonna be a great shot, and that's probably my favorite one of the whole set today. So here I started to tear down the lights and I was gonna go to a single light setup here and just do one small hard light up against a wall with like a red gel on it. And as I put on this red gel, I realized that the, the green to red were blending together into yellow in the middle. And I thought, hey, let's just get like a silhouette shot in front of this real quick here. And so that was an unplanned shot that we grabbed along the way that I thought was kind of cool looking. The red, green, and yellow reminded me of like the old Blink-182 album, um, Take Off Your Pants and uh, Jacket. Um, and so like, I was like, hey, you're kind of pop punky. Let's, let's, Let's do this little subtle nod to Blink-182 here. Anyway, so this setup, I used to, like when I learned portraiture, they were like large light source and get your model away from the wall. And then one day I was like, what if I do like the exact opposite? Like no fill light, just one small hard light and put them right next to the wall. And I started finding that like, hey, if you literally break every rule, it looks cool as well. And so these shots here, they, they look very dramatic. But yeah, this was our fun little photo shoot here. And on a, on a fun little haircut, I thank you so much for watching. If you're into this sort of thing, please like and subscribe.